Anatimarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tesma Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschatyate Shatarine Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome to our Bhakti Shastri we're now on lesson number four of the Bhagavad Gita. All right, so I'll go to share the screen. Everyone can see PowerPoint? Yes, my teacher. Okay, good. So, lesson four, contents of the Gita summarized, that's the English title of the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Does anybody happen to know the Sanskrit title of the second chapter? Anyone? No? Okay. So a quick review of yesterday's lesson, we talked, a, we tried to introduce at least the principles of Varnashram Dharma. Maybe someone can re re remember something, do you remember something about Varnashram Dharma we spoke about yesterday? Anyone? Nobody? Amrita Gopi? Are you here? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Tell me something about Varnashram Dharma. What, what is Varnashram Dharma? Anything. You don't need to look at the book. Just tell me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find my notes, Maharaj. Sorry. You, you don't remember anything about Varnashram Dharma? Uh, Maharaj, is it uh, like uh, each Varna has their own Dharma, like a Kshatriyas uh, with the passion, he's the protesting, and uh, Brahmana supposed to be in the mood of goodness, and uh, is that the what you are asking? Yes. Just, I said anything, just tell me something. Okay, about yeah. Brahma. Yes, ma sorry. Yes, Maharaj, like Mother, you were saying, um, Brahm Brahman is supposed to be um, knowledgeable, uh, sharing, trans uh, you know, uh, knowledge, transcendental knowledge to others, and pious, um, honest, and truthful, and the Chetres are supposed to be um, courageous leaders, control, management, organize, and voices are supposed to be um, in a business, cow protection, trading, and sudras are for labor, service to others. Okay, thank you. That's something. 
It's about the occupation. What, what is the basic idea of Varnashram Dharma? What's uh, can I add something? Yes. Uh, Varnashram is a system of uh, four Varna and four Ashram. Uh, in the society is divided into four Varna and four Ashram. Four Varnas are Brahman, Kshatriya, Shudra and Vaishya. And Ashram uh, is like Brahmachari, Vrasta, Vanpasta and Sanyasi. Uh, so what's the purpose of this dividing society? Is it to let people know they're not equal? Let people know that somebody's better than somebody else, is it? Uncle uh, Kumar, regards to the, the Varnashram, uh, the, the whole idea is to help the family to grow into their spiritual value. Uh, also, uh, the whole purpose of this Varnashram Dharma is to uh, help the, the begin a proper spiritual population. Well, it's not only concerned with spiritual, spirituality. What can I say something? It's for the purpose of the state and uh, society, Maharaj, and for the community. What? It's for the progress of the state and community. It's designed in such a way that the community itself can grow. Progress, progress. in what in what sense? What in kind like of progress? In family and. And, and they're doing their occupational duties. Materially and spiritually, right? Varnashram is not only concerned with spirituality, it's also very much concerned with developing the material basis of life. And the people should be properly engaged, everyone should have proper, uh, should have some kind of occupation. Can, can you mute, mute your mic, please, when you're not talking to in the class? Could you mute your mic? My, I just you had added, uh, I just want to confirm that this uh, Varna and Ashram, Varna is like uh, engaging our psychophysical nature or the quality we acquired. Very Ashram, good, yes. Ashrama is for like spiritual evolution. So we can say Varna is for our material evolution and uh, Ashram is for spiritual evolution of a person. Okay. Certainly relating to the psychophysical nature of everyone. People should be properly engaged. So this is a something of the principles of Varnashram. All right, then we went on to speak about Arjuna's reasons for not fighting according to the principles of Varnashram Dharma. Remember four reasons why Arjuna didn't want to fight? Let me hear one. Confession. Yes, thank you. Someone else, number two? Enjoyment. Number two, enjoyment. Now somebody's mic's not muted yet. If you have a lot of people in the background, you have to mute your mic. It's a big disturbance. So, Compassion, enjoyment, number three? Sinful reactions. Sinful reactions. Number four? Destruction of the dynasty. Destruction of the dynasty, right. And what are the stages which bring about the destruction of the dynasty? What happens, first of all? Elderly people die. Yeah, the elders particularly die. The elders, the heads of the families, the heads of the dynasty, they die. And then when they're not there, what happens? Uh, women got polluted. Not immediately. Before that, what happens? They're the family traditions and values. Yeah, the value, family traditions are lost. They give up the, the and people become irreligious. irreligious. Right, they become irreligious. And when the men become irreligious, then the women follow them. And when the women are not properly cared for, then we get the unwanted progeny. And then after that, then there's also the, the dynasty, they, they neglect the family traditions and the cult community projects and all of these things. You know, you have to be careful, Prabhu, you're still speaking on your mic. 
please try, if you're not going to speak, if you're going to be speaking Hindi and like that to people around you, mute your mic. Please don't disturb the class. All right, so Arjuna's four reasons for not fighting, we spoke about that according to Vanashram Dharma. We discussed how Arjuna was not properly applying the principles of Vanasha in, in the, these reasons. And then we also spoke about Arjuna's dilemma and his surrender to Krishna. This is a very important point. In order to take up the practice of yoga and to hear this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, one has to have reached that, this kind of con position, something similar to Arjuna's position. Arjuna was confused. In some ways he was even bewildered. He didn't know what to do. And so he was in a, a very difficult situation. He had, a, he had to make choices. He didn't know what he should do. It was a difficult situation and in our in our own practice of krishna consciousness if we have this kind of experience it's actually a very good help for us to enter into krishna consciousness because it makes us much more receptive to the message of krishna if we are thinking we know everything if we're thinking, I don't have any problems, I'm happy, I have everything, then we won't be much interested in Krishna consciousness. But if we're feeling that we're lacking something, just like Arjuna, Arjuna's situation, you know, his vision was quite different from Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra, Duryodhan, the Kauravas, they were seeing they were making distinction, friend and enemy. Was Arjuna thinking like that? Was Arjuna also thinking friend and enemy? What was Arjuna's thinking? Did he see the... Yes, go ahead. He was thinking uh, uh, as... Uh, as he was considering everybody family. He, he knew that on the other side of the back of the very good. He was also their friends and family. Yes, very good. He's thinking, we are all one family. These people are my relatives, my cousins. I'm supposed to fight and kill them. He wasn't thinking like like Duryodhan, enemy, friend. No. He was thinking in a much broader way. And therefore he was thinking that this, fight, this fighting is not good, that I'm going to kill all these people, and, you know, they're our family, is it right to do all this? And he's thinking, is money or the kingdom, is it really so important? And we see these situations in the modern life how families argue and they, they hate each other over money, over little pro bits of property which the family have. They will fight to get it and they will hate each other, they will despise each other. If one gets something, the other doesn't get it. But Arjuna, he's not thinking like that. He's thinking we're all one family. It all, it, it, it doesn't make any difference. He's thinking, what's the value of all of these things? If everybody has to die, if we're going to have to kill each other for it, what kind of, what's the good of this? So, because he was in this situation, it made him very receptive to hear from Krishna. And he surrendered himself to Krishna so that he could get proper instruction. All right, there was one more reason, indecision. Uh, Maharaj? Yes? Can I ask you one question? 
is there any beeping noise here uh, in the somewhere coming because i think couple of us are hearing the beeping noise constantly from the oh okay well that's my usb drive here for my computer i'll put it okay. on i can put it off and close down my the other computer I'm kind of used to it. It goes on all the time. <laughs> I live with it. All right. So five reasons. Dharma Samuda, remember? What is the meaning? Dharma Samuda? Archana? Is Archana here today? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Do you know this word? Do you know? Dharma Samuda means? Conversation, transcendental conversation. No. Or, uh, oh, well, one minute. It's in the seventh verse of the second chapter. Oh. Karpanya dojo pahata swabhava dharma. Uh -uh. Prachami tam dharma, dharma samudha cheta. Dharma Samudra. Did someone else tell her? Harini? Harini Saki? Uh, confused about the duty, Maharaj. Right. Confused about the duty. This is Arjuna's condition. Dharma Samudra. This is the important point. Confusion about the duty. What to do? Indecision. Should he fight? Should he not fight? So we're going to look now. Arguments against these different things. How does Krishna defeat these arguments. We heard how it wasn't according to Varnashram, Arjuna's arguments. So the first, the first point is going to come up. Uh, well, first of all, we had Arjuna surrender to Krishna, right? He surrenders to Krishna. And, but Krishna tests him a little bit. He said, oh, Arjuna, I can't accept you as my student, as my disciple. He said, you and I are friends. How can I accept you as my disciple? But anyway, somehow Arjuna persevered. He was very humble. He was at the feet of Lord Krishna and he's begging Lord Krishna. So then Lord Krishna t takes the position of a teacher. And the teacher, he will, his job is not to flatter the student, but his job is to chastise the student. Just like we heard yesterday, that Prabhupada said when, when his guru chastised him, it was a blessing. When his guru called him rascal, fool, nothing in your brain, like that, this is a blessing. So, Krishna takes the position of a teacher to Arjuna and he begins by chastising him. He said, Oh Arjuna, you're speaking such learned words, but you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. So, this is Lord Krishna's first point to Arjuna, that your mourning, your, your lamentation is it's not worth it. You're, you're lamenting about something which is not worth all this attention. And we're going to hear why in this next section, Jnana, from text 11 up to te text 30, Lord Krishna will present this knowledge of Jnana. Actually, the second chapter is called Sankhya. And Sankhya means this, uh, the knowledge of the soul, the nature of the soul. So this knowledge is presented in the first, in this, this section, text 11 up to 30. We're going to hear about the difference between the body and the soul. 
very basic, very elementary point of spiritual knowledge. But very important to understand carefully and to realize. All right, so. Here you can see, I think we saw this, did, did you see this before, this slide? This, uh, what is happening in the picture? You can see the illustration, the drawing, what's happening? The person is drowning Maharaj and he's saving the clothes, he's not saving the person. Right. So what's the point? What's the philosophical... We're trying to save our body, but not our soul. Yeah, we spend all the time taking care of the body and neglecting the most important part, the soul. Right. So, this is the problem. What's another example like that? This one is the drowning man. What's another example Prabhupada would often give? Bird in the cage? Okay. Yes, right. Bird in the cage. Tell us. We are trying to make the cage perfect. We clean it, and but we do not take care about the, take care of the bird. But we do not feed it and uh, not give it water. And the bird symbolize uh, our soul, and the cage is our body. Okay. So. The bird cannot sing anymore. <laughs> so how to, what happens to the bird with no food? Becomes weaker. Yeah, eventually it dies, right? Yeah. So, so the same way we have to take care of the body, at the same time we have to also take care of the soul. Don't mm -hmm. neglect the soul. Okay, so text 20. Najayate mriyate vakadachin. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death at any time. Right? So the eternal nature of the soul is established and the temporary nature of the body. The soul doesn't take birth and the soul doesn't die. Dhruvam janma mritasyacha. One who has taken his birth is sure to die. People are all worried that we're going to die. Yes, we're all going to die. Prabhupada said the death rate is the same it's always been. The death rate is 100%. Everyone dies. Everyone who takes birth, every living entity takes birth, they have to die because we accepted a material body. So the material body is temporary. We have to expect that. Some living entities live for a few hours and some live for a few years and some live for decades. From Prabhupada's purport, from both viewpoints, there is no cause of lamentation because the living entity as he is cannot be killed nor can the material body be saved for any length of time or permanently protected. So very simple basic point, the soul cannot be killed and the body cannot be saved.
So this way, by presenting the arguments about the nature of the soul, the eternal nature of the soul, and the temporary nature of the body, what is Arjun, what is Lord Krishna accomplishing? Why is he presenting this to Arjuna? because Arjuna was lamenting on the bodily platform that he is going to kill his own relatives. Yes. Therefore Krishna presented that, uh, that he is not going to kill the bodies of his uh, relatives. Right. Then Krishna is saying, why are you worrying? We're all going to die anyway. Of course, this point often is not appreciated by materialistic people and the bodily concept of life. And people often can criticize Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna encouraged all this killing. All these people died in the battle of Kurukshetra. It was all Krishna's fault. He encouraged the battle. But the point is, they're all going to die anyway, whether they die in the battle or not. But to die in the battle, that was a glorious death. And just simply to die in the hospital bed or something, that's not very glorious. Better to die on the battlefield. At least they're performing their duty and they, they get great merits by dying in such a manner. So Arjuna was worried about killing people like Bhishma and Drona, but Lord Krishna said, well, look, they're going to get a new body. Why are you worried? They'll get a new body. I remember His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami. Some years ago he had a health problem and he had to go to hospital for his heart. And the devotees, his disciples there in uh, Ujjain were very worried about him. But he said to them, he said afterwards when he came back, he said, why are you worried? He said, if you get a new car, are you going to worry about it? Are you going to worry about the old car? Oh, my old car. No, you've got a new car. Why worry about the old car? So body is just like that, just like a car. You give up the old car, you get a new car. You're lucky. You should be glad. All right? Going on, Arjuna, Lord Krishna is going to defeat Arjuna's second argument. Arjuna, Arjuna was concerned that he wouldn't enjoy. So Lord Krishna is going to speak the teachings of Karma Kanda. Karma Kanda means the path of activity, fruit of activity, karmas, fruit of activity, kar Kanda. And so the path of fruit of activity. Generally, this is a materialistic philosophy. So Lord Krishna is presenting this Karma Kanda section here in the Bhagavad Gita. We should understand Karma Kanda is not spiritual, it's material. Often brahmanas today, the so-called brahmanas today, they don't really teach spirituality. They're usually all karmakandi brahmins, karmakandi brahmins. And they do activities, they do karmakandi activities, ritualistic activities for material enjoyment, to help people to get more material enjoyment. Like well, what do they want? What, what kind of things do you want to enjoy? Some people want another child, or some people just want to get a marriage, have a good marriage. And some people want prosperity, material prosperity. And other people are thinking about the next life, going to higher planets, going to the heavenly planets and enjoying there, and drinking somaras, and enjoying the heavenly life. So different things, like karmakandi activities. People have these material desires and they, they perform this karmakandi process. So Lord Krishna presents this to Arjuna, that you want to enjoy, oh, 
Yeah, so do it like karma kanda. Think of your work and, and, and like, a, like materialistic people do. Here we can see how Krishna presents it in the Bhagavad Gita. He tells Arjuna, either you will be killed on the battlefield and attain the heavenly planets, or you will conquer and enjoy the earthly kingdom. Conquer and enjoy the earthly kingdom. So, what's Krishna saying here? He said, if you win, you will enjoy the earthly kingdom. And if you lose, you'll be killed on the battlefield. You go to heaven. So, win or lose. Both ways, you will enjoy. But what will happen if you don't fight? Someone? If Arjuna doesn't fight, will he enjoy? Someone? No, Maharaj, he will not enjoy. Why not? People will think that he is coward. Yes. They won't think, oh, he was so righteous, he didn't want to fight. They think he was a coward, he was afraid. So, uh, I think Prabhupada said, for, for one who has been honoured, dishonour is worse than death. This is the situation. That if Arjuna doesn't fight, he will be dishonoured and that will be very painful to him. Oh, stated here, right. So Bhagavad Gita. What could be more painful for you? Hmm. Another argument. Arjuna was concerned about sinful reactions. And we're going to hear how Krishna defeats them. Also, by karmakanda activity, if he fights in the mood of karmakanda, as karmakanda to enjoy the results, if, he, if he's, you know, it's not just the activity, but it's the consciousness with which we perform the activity. We have to understand there may be two people doing the same activity, and one person. He is doing it as devotional service. And another person, he is doing it to enjoy the result. They are doing the same activity, but with a very different consciousness. So, Lord Krishna said, if you fight to enjoy, to get the kingdom to enjoy, he said, because you are fighting out of duty, so there's no sinful reactions. Because you were doing it, it was your prescribed duty, your swadharma, right? We spoke about swadharma. There are two kinds of swadharma. There is the material swadharma and there is also spiritual swadharma. Material swadharma is according to Varnashram. So Arjuna as a Kshatriya, he's meant to fight. And he can fight to enjoy without sinful reaction. And spiritual swadharma, you have to be liberated to understand you're the servant of Krishna. Alright? Swarga dwaram apavritam. Swarga, heaven, dwaram the doors, open the doors of heaven, you can go to, go to and enjoy. Happy are the Kshatriyas to whom such fighting opportunities come, unsought, opening for them the doors of the heavenly planets. Why are they so happy? 
Why the Kshatri is so happy to get this fighting opportunity? Partha. Because their, their inbred nature is their inherent nature of fighting. Yes, it's their nature. They like it. That's their, you know, they've taken that life, it's their career. They're happy to do it. And they're not worried about what will I earn. They're fighting out, out of duty. And, and they know win or lose, what's going to happen. Who's going to go to heaven? If they win, are they going to go to heaven? If they, if... Yeah, go ahead. Or if they will, if they will, they will enjoy here. And if they, in case if they get died, they will go to heavenly planet. Yes, if they're killed on the battlefield, when they're killed on the battlefield, they'll go to heaven. It's a glorious death. They died in the battle. We shouldn't think that people go to war today are like that. You go on the battlefield today and you're killed in battle. Are they going to go to heaven? Prabhupada said no. He said they go to hell. Both sides. We have to understand this, is a, this was before the Kali Yuga and this was a Dharma Yut. This was a, you know, a thought according to religious principles. The people who have come to fight <clears throat> are Kshatriyas and they've come here. They've come to Kurukshetra with the intention of performing their duty, fighting on the battlefield. Either they will win and enjoy the kingdom and if they don't win, they will be killed on the battlefield. They won't go home defeated. From Prabhupada's purport, if however you do not perform your religious duty of fighting, then you will certainly incur sins for neglecting your duty. So you, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. So that's sinful. You get reactions for that. You were supposed to fight. You didn't do it. You get sinful reactions for that. Someone can read? Kirtida, read. If he abandoned the battle, not only would be neg he neglected his specific duty as a Kshatriya, but he would lose all his fame and good name and thus prepare the, his royal role to hell. In other words, he would go to hell not by fighting, but by withdrawing from battle. Mm. 233, Thank you. So he's going to go to hell if he doesn't fight. Prabhupada explains, he gives a nice example here. There, there was a king. Yasho Manta Singh. Either he conquers the battle or he lays down his body there, dead. So the man who has come, he must be somebody pretender. So she refused to open the door. This is funny. Somehow the slide didn't work properly. Anyway, let's see. Prabhupada is telling a story. This one king, Yasho Manta Singh. Now he went to battle. And he went to battle and his army was defeated. And so he came home alone. And he came back to his palace, but he couldn't get in. The door was locked. And so he was calling, open the door. I'm Yasho Manta Singh, I'm the king. I've been defeated in the battle and I've come home. So they told the queen. 
the queen, the wife of Yashomanta Sen, they told her, your husband, they, your husband said he went to battle and he's been defeated. He's asking us to open the door to let him in. What should we do? So, she said, don't open the door. She said, my husband would not come home defeated. Either he will die on the battlefield or he will be victorious. But he will, he will not come home defeated. Prabhupada said, this is the spirit of Kshatriya. And so the queen was saying, he's not my husband, he must be somebody else, he's some pretender, don't open the door. <laughs> Very interesting story. The spirit of Kshatriya, die on the battlefield or win the battle. You don't go home defeated. So compassion, how did Lord Krishna defeat Arjuna's compassion? Yes, who can tell me how, we, how is Lord Krishna going to defeat Arjuna's compassion? Maharaj, he said that Krishna said that like his compassion is misplaced. His compassion is for the body and his compassion is not for the soul, which is eternal. Okay. So, what, in one word, how did Krishna defeat Arjuna's compassion? He gave knowledge. knowledge. Yes. Yes, he gave knowledge, right? He gave gyan. And that was in presenting the difference between the body and the soul. And then, how does Krishna, Lord Krishna defeat enjoyment and sinful reactions? What's Krishna's argument? Karmakanda. Hmm? Karmakanda. Karmakanda. By presenting Karmakanda philosophy, Krishna is saying, you do it as karmakanda, is it to, you, you can enjoy, you get good results. And no sinful reactions. Prabhupada explains, both ways you have to fight. Both ways you have to fight. Krishna is trying to put Arjuna in the dilemma. This way or that way, you must have to fight. Arjuna was thinking, not fight, but, Prabhu, but Prabhupada's explaining, Krishna doesn't think not fight. Krishna thinks both ways you have to fight. Either you win or you lose, doesn't matter, but you have to fight. Prabhupada said, if you think that you are not in bodily concept of life, then it is my order. You must fight. You're, if, you, if you understand you're not the body, that you're a soul, why should you hesitate not to fight? You're not, you're not the body. You're you don't have to worry about the body. And the soul cannot be killed. So... Go to battle. And if you think that you are in bodily concept of life, then you are a Kshatriya. You must fight. Both ways you have to fight. This is Krishna's conclusion. Prabhupada presents this very nicely here, very important for us to understand. Either someone's thinking they're, they're the body, you have to fight. Why? Because it's your duty as a Kshatriya. And someone else is more advanced. They understand I'm not the body, I'm a soul. And still you have to fight. Why? Well, the soul cannot be killed anyway, so why should you worry?
So this path of Karmakanda, we're going to look at it for a little while here. We want you to understand properly, described here in this section of the Bhagavad Gita. Oh. Uh, would someone like to read the verse? Yes, go ahead, Madhiji. Go ahead, Madhiji. Go ahead, read. Okay. Yam iman pushpitam vacham pravartanti avipat chitaha vedavad rata partha nanyas astit vadinaha men of small knowledge are very much attached to the follow flowery world of the Vedas which recommended various fruitive activities for elevation to heavenly planets resulting in good birth, power and so forth. Maharaj, I can't read. After that. No, okay, let's see. Next slide. Go ahead. Teya gunya Visaya Veda Mistari Kuno Bhavarjuna. The Vedas deal mainly with the subject of the three modes of material nature. O Arjuna, become transcendental to these three modes. Yes. So, the Vedas deal with the three modes of material nature. Why should we want to rise above them? What's the problem? The three modes of material nature, there may be some enjoyment, but there will also be some suffering there. You're not going to get real happiness. Just like here, men, are, men of small knowledge are attached to the flowery words of the Vedas. Why, why are the words of the Vedas compared to flowers? What's the point? What's the nature of flowers? To attract? Yes, how long do they attract? Not hmm? How long do the flowers attract? Until it fades. Yeah, how long does it take? A couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not very long, right? That's the point. The flowery words of the Vedas. And so the words of the Vedas, they give some enjoyment, they're offering some enjoyment, but it's going to be very temporary. It's not going to last for very long. That's the point. Material benefit. So Arjuna is encouraged, rise above the modes of nature. The Vedas are dealing with the modes of nature. The Vedas material knowledge mainly. The Vedas covering all different aspects of material science. Small section on spirituality. Difficult to know Krishna from the Vedas. Then Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma says, Vedeshu Durlapam. Adurlapam Atma Bhakto. Difficult to know Krishna from the Vedas, but very easy to know him from the devotees. So rise above the modes. So here's an exercise for you. Yagna Prabhu, are you there? Yagna. Yagna Prabhu, wait, let me see, I have to get this boy to make the... Anyway, here's it, I'll show you the exercise first, then we'll put you in groups. Just 
discuss the relevance of the Karma Kanda division of the Vedas in the practice of Krishna consciousness. It's the first thing you have to do. And then, how are the practices of ISKCON authorized from Vedic point of view? Refer to verses, purports and analogies here. Yeah. Okay, let me get, I have to get this boy who's put, supposed to help me, where's he gone? Hello Krishna? Yagna, are you there? Yes, Maharaj, I'm there. All right, I'm just about to ask you that breakout room. Okay, we want group, how many people are here this morning? 19, 19 Maharaj. Okay, so like yesterday, two groups of six and one of seven. Okay, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So have you read over those verses? You can read those verses for yourself. We'll read the questions, uh, Maharaj. Discuss the relevance of the Karmakanda division of the Vedas in the practice of Krishna consciousness. Yes. How are the practices of ISKCON authorized from Vedic point of view? And refer to verses. Okay. Refer to verses, purports, and analogies from 2.42 to 46. Okay. Okay. We'll go through that, Maharaj. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. 2.42 men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruit of activities for elevation to heavenly planets, resultant good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification and opulent life, they say that this is nothing more than this. Hello, uh, this is something Prabhu 2.42 to 2.46. You can see here yeah. uh, men with the small knowledge attached to the flowery verse of the Vedas, yeah. and then one can think about going to heavenly planet. Then uh, and the present can be good birth and power and so forth. I think as Maharaj may have mentioned that flowery words are just the way flowers don't last for a long period. Similarly, uh, you know, all kind of material enjoyment that we are going to get from the Karmakanda is also not going to last for long. So we should not focus on those things if we want to be in Krishna consciousness. We should focus more on the spiritual aspects of it. My speak not very good, Mother Maybe Kirtida Mother can do. Okay, I'll try. Okay, I'll try. 
Yes, Mataji. I can give yes. my opinion. Please help me. <laughs> yes, yes, Mataji. Yes, Mataji. We will. Um, you know, like a uh, chanting sixty rounds are going to Mangalarti every for third day. Isn't that the? Isn't that called rituals? They can be rituals, but they are not karma kanda. Uh, they are not karma kanda. No, you're right. Not for the material benefit. I understood, but I was saying the rituals. Maharaj, we are just confused about what are the karma kanda in uh, Krishna consciousness. Well, that's that's for you to decide. Can you please give us some hint? <laughs> no, I don't want to spoil it for you. I want you to find that decide for yourself. Prabhu, we do karma kind in terms of name giving ceremony, forest graves for children. All these things are karma kind. But for the devotees, the, the, the benefits that we are trying to attract is different. Maharaj, are we on the right track? Sorry? Are we going to the right track there? Yeah, I think you're going the right track, yeah. Okay. So, so Prabhu, if, uh, if, if this is a track, I can add, uh, like, uh, we do something... Um, do so, can we first of all decide who's going to be present? Does he decide who's going to be Hare Krishna Prabhu, uh, Ramnasa Prabhu, you can go ahead present Prabhu because uh, you have the major points. Then Prabhu, then, then, then you, you present and we discuss. Please go ahead Prabhu. Sorry, you be present? No, I am very bad at presenting. <laughs> I can chatter only. What's your main point? Hare Krishna, uh, we can have this point that uh, when we perform any kind of karma then we get only temporary results. But if we perform it by making Krishna at center, then uh, that will not bind us to the law of karmas. As in his own whatever rituals we perform, uh, Krishna is always at the center of that point. So, uh, that does not bind us to the law of karma. Mataji, why don't you present? You can, you, you can, we can discuss and you can do the presentation. Yeah, we should have different people. Everybody should try to take a turn in presenting. It's good to have different people present. If you haven't presented before, you should take a turn to do it. It's important. Get some experience. We didn't hear it properly now. Okay, Prabhu, you can close the meeting. You can close the meeting now, Prabhu. Yagna? Prabhu. Yes. Uh, Prabhu, I accidentally came into the main session. I had to go back to my breakout room. Is it is it possible? Not if, uh, we already no. Okay, Prabhu. All right, they're not, oh, we're not out yet, huh? Take more time. Okay, everyone's out? Yes, yes, no, 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 no.
Okay, thank you. All right, so let's hear group number two. Hare Krishna Maharaji, Dhamma Pranam. Hare Krishna. So I have, yeah, I'm representing on behalf of our team. So we have come to various points, like uh, as it is asked in the question that uh, what is the relevance of Karm Kanda, <coughs> division of Vedas in the practice of Krishna consciousness. So we have come to the conclusion that uh, if we perform uh, any kind of uh, Karm Kanda, uh, in material point of view, then it binds us to the law of nature. But when we do it uh, by making Krishna at center, so that Karm Kanda will not bind us to the law of Karma, uh, because everything will be uh, offered to Lord Krishna at that time. Uh, and uh, what Krishna has said here that uh, we have to offer the fruits to Lord Krishna when performing any kind of our duties, uh, whether it is material or spiritual. So it will not bind us to the law of Karma. So that is the main goal of uh, progressing in the spiritual life as well. By making Krishna at center, uh, like uh, in Iskon, we perform various kind of ritual ceremonies like Agni, Hotta, Yajya, Deity installation and many more. So in that way, uh, we, there Krishna is in the center. And we can also say that uh, when we perform any kind of function in our family also, uh, the birthday ceremony or marriage ceremony, like anything, we can uh, make Krishna at center by doing Harinam Sankirtan, uh, chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra and involve everyone who are devotees or not devotees so that they can also be uh, involved in that part and make their spiritual progress from any point. Okay. Yes. Good. That's it, Maharaj. Very nice points. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Let's hear group number Number one. Group one? Okay. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Sorry, I forgot the group number. So, um, uh, we're talking about Karma Kanda philosophy, which basically means enjoying the fruit of activities, right? So, um, they are mostly designed or meant for the temporary enjoyment. So, uh, like you know we mentioned earlier these are like the flowery words and people get attached to it it's only for a temporary period so it withers after some time so as devotees in krishna consciousness we should not focus in just enjoying these karma kandi um, activities but to elevate ourselves in um, the spiritual aspect and to develop that and um, we also um, uh, talk about the um, uh, from the purport to that uh, 43 that the Vedas focus on, uh, like, you know, the, uh, it, it, if we follow the Karmakanda activities, we are um, elevated to the heavenly planets where we can enjoy more. But uh, once we go to the enjoyment portion, then it's very hard for us to fix in Krishna consciousness, which is not our goal. And also that um, we don't want enjoyment. We do want to serve Krishna and enjoy in that way, but not as a, you know, just be entangled in this. So Krishna then asks us uh, to rise above the three modes and to come into transcendental platform. Uh, that's why we should not just be entangled in the um, karma kanda philosophy. And uh, 246 also talks about the analogy of the well and reservoir, how uh, karma kanda is supposed to be a portion which guides us to the reservoir, uh, the spiritual aspect or Krishna knowing him, um, not to just enjoy in itself. So uh, the purpose of the Vedas is to rise above the three modes and then to ultimately know Krishna or to become to um, the point of self-realization. So. Can you explain this point again about the, uh, the well and, the, and the, the wells and the reservoir of water? So that was 246 translation, Maharaj. So it was Panchmi Mataji gave me the uh, point. So the, I mean, she can elaborate on it. So, um, like how a small well can provide water to like drink and, you know, it can give the purpose, but uh, the same purpose can be given by this great reservoir of water. That's why the small well is kind of um, compared to the Karma Kanda division, whereas um, self-realization or like getting to know Lord is the great reservoir in marriage. Uh-huh. Yeah, you, actually, 
it's an important, it's, a, it's an important example, it's a nice example. Uh, we should understand, in a village there may be many wells. One well is drinking water, and one well is the water for washing clothes. And another well is the water which they use for uh, bathing. So there's different qualities of water and they will assign different wells to different actions. But if there's a big river, just like you live beside the Ganga, you live beside the Ganga, then everything's done there in the Ganga. So the big reservoir of water, you can do everything. So that's it. And then how does the verse go? It said, the, one should know the, the purpose behind the Veda. It's not just simply repeating the Vedas, but we should know what is the purpose behind the Vedas. So the purpose behind the Vedas should be understood. Purpose, so one may do Vedic rituals without knowing what's the purpose behind all these rituals. So people do rituals, karma candy rituals, Somebody wants a child, somebody wants a husband, somebody wants a wife, somebody wants a car, somebody wants the different issues, different things we want we, and we do some ritual for. But there's a higher purpose behind all of these rituals and that higher purpose is ultimately to get us out of the material world to develop our consciousness of God. So that's the, the real, the ultimate purpose behind the Vedas. So we want to understand the purpose behind all the Vedas. Okay, let's hear group number three. As previous speakers have already told that Karmakandi is meant to, uh, for elevation, or it recommends a lot of different kinds of sacrifices um, they recommended for elevation to the heavenly planets and or to it for enjoying for enjoyment or uh, to enjoy uh, on this life and uh, but in Krishna consciousness we can use if you have knowledge we can use uh, different so some kinds of sacrifice for purification not for enjoyment uh, but to purify our consciousness and we, that, could, that it could help, can help us to proceed in the spiritual way. Uh, for example, when we uh, get initiation, we also make sacrifices and for the child, for, for, for the child also, and in kinds of some scars. Purification. Okay. All right, Kurti Damataji, thank you. Let's go back here. Now, let me see. Go back to the PowerPoint. Share the screen here. Okay, the relevance of the Karmakanda division in the Vedas in the practice of Krishna Consciousness. Is it relevant? No. The answer is no, it's not relevant in the practice of Krishna Consciousness. Devotees have no interest in Karmakanda activities. They're just for material sense gratification. So, in the practice of Krishna Consciousness, we're practicing devotional service. Karmakandi activities have nothing to do with devotional service. Okay, you have material desires. Srimad Bhagavatam says, Akama sarva kamo va moksha kama udharadi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham. The you have all material desires or no material desires or you want liberation, whatever you want, you should get it, you should worship Krishna. 
we don't just simply do karmakandi activities. Karmakandi activities are material. So it's not relevant to the practice of Krishna consciousness. How are the practices of ISKCON authorized from Vedic point of view? Now, I thought the first group did well on that. They explained how we can incorporate the different practices of ISKCON. Particularly, what is the main practice of ISKCON? The kirtan, the chanting of the holy name. Is that authorized from the Vedic point of view? Most definitely it is, yes. The chanting of the holy name. There is the, the whole purpose of the Vedas is to help to make us God conscious. The goal behind all the Vedas, the ultimate purpose. So the practices of ISKCON, they establish the Vedic principles. We're meant to chant the holy name, we're meant to worship the Lord. This is all also authorized from the Vedic point of view. So we should understand the relevance of this section of the Bhagavad Gita. That Krishna is presenting this karmakandi process in the Bhagavad Gita. Now Krishna is very generous in Bhagavad Gita. He presents everything. He talks about everything. We're going to hear Jnana Yoga and we'll hear Astanga Yoga and here, now here in the second chapter we're hearing Karma Kanda. And Karma Kanda, it's not even spiritual, it's a material activity. And Krishna's presenting it. He's using it as an argument, just simply to get it through to Arjuna or to get it through to all the other materialistic people that if you want to get results, you can do it, but you, you, have to perform, you have to perform duty. You have to perform duty. That, that is the idea of the karmakanda. Do your duty and enjoy the results. But after explaining the karmakanda section, then Lord Krishna will go on to explain a higher principle. He will explain about buddhi yoga. Rather than just simply karmakanda, buddhi yoga is there, which is a spiritual activity. Yoga, connected to the Supreme, using proper knowledge and intelligence to work. Karmakanda activity is just working to enjoy. The only motivation is enjoyment. I want to enjoy. But buddhi yoga is higher than that because one is working with proper understanding, with detachment. This, the sense of duty, but with detachment. Okay, we're going to go on to hear about buddhi yoga. Oh, first of all, about uh, because we're talking about is it authorized, is our Krishna conscious process authorized? So in the purport, Prabhupada explains, the best purpose of Vedanta philosophy is served by inoffensively chanting the holy name of the Lord. The highest Vedantist is the great soul who takes pleasure in chanting the holy name of the Lord. Right. You want to be a Vedantist? Simply chant Hare Krishna. That's the greatest Vedantist, the best Vedantist, the chanting of the holy name. By all the Vedas I am to be known, right? Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Srila Prabhupada's mercy. All right, so going on to buddhi yoga, karma yoga. Uh, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains, after explaining the process of jnana, that process of jnana, we explained that jnana is actually the complete knowledge of the soul, complete description of the, the soul. So this is, this is sankhya. This is also described as sankhya. 
the Sankhya which is given in Bhagavad Gita is different from the Sankhya which is in the Bhagavatam, which is in the third canto, you have Lord Kapila speaking Sankhya philosophy. So Sankhya which comes in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita is different from that, but the purpose is the same. The principles are the same, just a different presentation. So Lord Krishna said, thus far I have described this knowledge to you through analytical study. Analytical study, Gyan or Sankhya, that was the analytical study. Analytical study, we were looking at the difference between the body and the soul. The body takes birth, the body dies. The soul is eternal. Very different. So, this was Gyan, Sankhya philosophy. Now, Lord Krishna is going to explain Karma Yoga or Buddhi Yoga. Now listen as I explain it in terms of working without fruit of results, O son of Prita. When you act in such knowledge, you can free yourself from the bondage of works. So this is wonderful. Working, first of all working, but without fruitive results. When you act in such knowledge, and other, you have to know how you're working, what you're doing, then you can free yourself from the bondage of works, from the reactions. So this is buddhi yoga, working, but also acting with such knowledge, in such knowledge. Buddhi means intelligence, so you have knowledge. Not just simply karma yoga, but buddhi yoga. Karma yoga is often working without knowledge, they just simply work. But buddhi yoga is working with knowledge. So Krishna is going to explain this section now. Someone like to read for us? Any Prabhu can read here? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Sukha dukhe same kritva lava lavao jaya jayo tato yudhaya yujasya asma nevam papam avapasya asma. Do, do fight for the sake of fighting without considering happiness or distress, loss or gain, victory or defeat, and by so doing you shall never incur sin. Bhagavad Gita 2.38 Yes, so detached work, detached work, fight, why? For the sake of fighting, it's a duty, you're doing it as a duty, without considering the result, one way or the other, victory or defeat, detached, performing the duty with detachment, nice calm karma yoga, detached work then you never get sin. That's the point. No sinful reactions. Arjuna was worried about sinful reactions. So, detached work. Of karma, right? You know, for This is duty. One has to execute duty without any consideration of loss and gain. That is duty. Observing duty, just see, you are Kshatriya. There is necessity of this fighting. So you should not consider whether you are gaining or losing. It is your duty to fight. If you execute your duty nicely, there is no question of sin. To execute duty is piety. So Prabhupada's lecture, 
from the Bhagavad Gita. And the nature of duty, when you act, when you're doing your duty, then there's no question of sin. But detached, you should not consider that you're gaining or losing. You're simply performing duty. Karmani evadikaras te, meaning Arjuna's adhikari, adhikar, qualification or eligibility. Arjuna's eligibility is for work. Karma, work, karma, right? You, maybe you, some of you may know this verse. It's a very famous verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Karmani vadikaras te ma palishu kadachana. Meaning, you are not entitled to the fruit. How could this verse be misunderstood? Anyone could tell us? Yes, some Prabhus can tell us. Maharaj, can I? Yes, please. Maharaj, uh, sometimes it is propagated that work is worship. Ooh, yes. <laughs> so? So we have to work hard. Uh-huh. Work is worship. So, is that said here? In, I want to know more in, in relation to this particular verse. You know, that's a different point you're bringing up. That's another philosophy, that work is worship. It certainly it's a, 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 a not a proper statement of Krishna conscious philosophy. We don't approve that work is worship. Rather, you say, worship of the deities is worship. This worship of Krishna, it's not that all work is worship. We could say work may be duty, but it, there's a difference between duty and worship. So worship, we give our worship to Krishna. There are many bogus philosophies. Anyway, th this is an interesting verse. Someone else could tell me how this verse could be misunderstood. You, yeah, especially if you start with the, if you go back, you know. Oh, Krishna. Right, if we just see this part. This is the part people like to quote. You know, they like to quote, Krishna says, Karmani eva di karas te. Maharaj? Yes? Okay, sorry, my video is off. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, so, people, uh, most of the generally, when we go out uh, and trying to tell about Krishna conscious or anything, so they quote one fourth part of this whole sloka, that is first one, karmani vadi karaste. So if, and they said, Krishna said karma kiye ja. Let's do your karma. And we have to do our karma. And that is, and that is, uh, that is, we are eligible to do our karma and we have to do our work. That is the only part they, they even don't go beyond this. Right, that, uh, yes. Uh, that's right. That's the point. People don't go beyond that. <laughs> they say, Krishna said, I have a right to do my work. Yes. Yes, somebody else? Um, if I can add to what Mataji just said. Yeah. Um, so, like she was saying, I, whenever we talk about, yeah, Gita, people said that, oh, we have to do karma, then that. Uh, that makes people tend to work 
work and more work more than what their they need so that can entangle them to the like a haran you know mm -hmm. work more than what they need so just because in the gita krishna said do karma so we have to do more work so they end up working more than uh, they require they need yes all right that can that can bring you know bind them to you know more of the material activities Yes, they become very attached, very bind, they're very entangled and dedicated right. to their work, their commitment to their work. Of course, actually it's not really the work, but it's the results of the work which they're, they're really con committed to. So, that it's important, the second part of the verse, and of course that's only just half of the verse. But the, this is a very powerful point, that the fruit doesn't belong to the worker. Ma pali shu kadachana. You are not entitled to the fruit. And so if people thought that, they wouldn't want to work. Nobody would want to work. This is a problem. People work for sense gratification. So it's a, it's a common verse, a very well-known verse, and often misquoted. As Mataji said, we just hear the first part, karma niva is karma. Krishna says, I have a right to work. And they forget. Krishna also said, you are not entitled to the fruit. <laughs> when, when we go for preaching work, we go and see people and ask for them, ask them to contribute to Krishna consciousness. And they will often quote like this, the first part, but nobody will ever say the second part. They are all thinking, I'm working, yes, Krishna said I have a right to work. They don't know, Krishna also said, you're not entitled to the fruit. And never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of activity and never be attached to not doing your duty. That's the rest of the verse. Never consider yourself to be the cause of the result and never be attached to not doing your duty. So this is karma yoga, of course, described in Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada says, here the Lord said that you cannot stop your work, neither you can enjoy the activity, the fruit of your activities. That is a work on spiritual plane. So we want to work on the spiritual plane. Don't stop work. Don't try to enjoy the activity and don't try to enjoy the fruit. That is the spiritual platform, working on the spiritual platform. Someone like to read this verse for us? Somebody who's not read, Archana, read this verse. I can try good if Yoga Sadguru Karmani Sangat Tatva Dharnan Jana Jaya Siddhi Asiddhyo Samu Bhutva Samatham Yogam Uchyate Perform your duty Equipoised. Equipoised. Oh, Arjuna, uh, abund uh, abandoning all attachment to success or failure. Such equanimity. Equanimity is called yoga. Yes, equanimity means. Seeing everything equally, or being 
equipoised, peaceful, being steady in your mind. So, abandoning, don't be attached. The problems come when we, when we become attached. We become attached to success. I have to have success. So, no, it's not, it's, we're not the doer. We're just the instrument. We're not really the doer, we're just the, the instrument in the service of Krishna. So do it like that. That is yoga, then it becomes yoga. When we, when we detach ourselves from the results. And then we do things much better. When we're, when we're detached, then we can do things very nicely. The more we're attached, the more we're struggling, the more difficult it is. But if we just let go and just try and do our best, then Krishna takes over. Then it becomes yoga. So there's some references here in the purport we bring to your attention. Lord Krishna now directly says that Arjuna should fight for the sake of fighting because he desires the battle. That is the indirect hint given by Krishna to Arjuna in this verse. Indirect. Krishna doesn't say directly, do it for me. But he, he tells Arjuna, fight for the sake of fighting. Ultimately, Krishna wants him to do it for him. But he's not saying it, he's saying it indirectly. He says, just fight for the sake of fighting. And then again, in 46, Text 46, indirectly Arjuna was advised to act as Krishna told him. Though Krishna hasn't given the direct instruction yet that he should do everything for him. That will come later on. Krishna is taking it gradually. He's telling Arjuna, first of all, just do it as a sense of duty, be detached. And late, gradually Krishna will say, no, surrender to me and do it for me. That will come later. So Arjuna has defeated, has been defeated by Krishna, by knowledge, defeating compassion. And then we heard how enjoyment was also defeated by Karmakanda philosophy that you can enjoy, and sinful reactions also don't have to worry about. You work as, you do everything as buddhi yoga or nice calm karma yoga, detached work. Then you don't get sinful reactions. And then this way Krishna is defeating each of Arjuna's different arguments. Right, someone can read this for us from Bhaktivinoda Thakur, it's from the Purpur, text 72. I can read yeah, go ahead. Overview of Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has summarized the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita as being the contents of the whole text. In the Bhagavad Gita, the subject matters are Karma Yoga, Nani Yoga, and Bhakti Yoga. In the second chapter, Karma Yoga and Gnana Yoga have been clearly discussed and a glimpse of Bhakti Yoga has also been given as the contents of the complete text. 2.72 per book. Right. Actually, the, the Sanskrit title of the second chapter is Sankhya Yoga. And Sankhya Yoga means the complete description of the soul. But Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, he gave the English title contents of the Gita summarized and he uses this purport to justify it that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had said how that within the second chapter karma yoga had been presented, jnana yoga had been presented and a little bit about bhakti yoga. And so therefore Prabhupada thought contents of the Gita summarized. That's the second chapter. But actually, the, the actual title of the second chapter is Sankhya Yoga. Here you can see the breakdown of the second chapter. 
that we began with Arjuna surrendering to Krishna and becoming Krishna's disciple. And then Lord Krishna took the position of the teacher and he presented the philosophy of Gyan. Actually one of the first things which Lord Krishna said was, never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future will any of us ever cease to be. So that, that's also a very powerful verse because that also defeats the philosophy of Mayavada. There are several verses which defeat the Mayavada philosophy. But the Mayavada people are so stubborn, they will come along and say, oh no, no, you don't understand that verse, we'll tell you what the verse means. No, oh, so we don't waste time arguing with these Mayavada people. We tell them, just chant Hare Krishna and have some prasadam. So we have the Gyan part, the explaining difference between the body and soul, and how the soul is also there are two souls within the body, there's the individual soul and the super soul. And then we went on, Krishna went on to explain karma kanda, the performing work to enjoy the results. And how by doing your duty in a detail, just perform your duty, you can enjoy. Arjuna is going to enjoy, right? If he goes to battle, if he wins, he will enjoy the kingdom. And if he loses, he'll be killed on the battlefield, but he'll go to heaven. So win or lose, he will enjoy both ways. And then buddhi yoga or karma yoga, meaning detached work. Because one is detached, there's no sinful reactions. You're performing duty, in a detached manner, so there's no sinful reactions. And then the final section, the sthita dir muni, meaning the self-realized soul. We will hear about that in the next class. We're not going to do that today, that's next, next week. We'll hear about the sthita dir muni, which is the end of the chapter. We have a little exercise for you, another exercise, right? Okay, we have three groups. Let's see. Well, you can, you can each discuss the significance. Pratyavayo Navijate. In, in your group, you can divide into two groups. Each group, you can divide into two. One group will be three, and the other group will be four or three. So, group one. Pratyavaya Navidyate, Bhagavad Gita 240. And Group 2, Vayava Sayatmika Buddhi 241. So we ask you to discuss and tell us what's the significance of these statements. So, Yagna Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. So put the devotees back into the same groups. Okay, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, everyone. Dharma pronouns. Hare Krishna, Jivan Prabhu. So it's clear what you have to do, Prabhu? So, Maharaj, we have to make two groups, right? Right, right. You make two groups. One group does. And group... take one question. Yeah, take one question. Okay, yeah. 2.41. 2.41. 
Okay. Uh, so, how do we divide this group? I leave that to you. <laughs> it was poisoner. Uh, Krishna elevated her to the platform of mother. The thing. And then, yes, and then, yes. Another thing is, it says one person done in Krishna consciousness bears permanent results, mm -hmm. whereas in material activity without 100% success, there is no profit. Okay. That's so, for this part, you are preparing? Anybody, I, uh, Amrita Gopi Mataji, would you like to present this one? Um, no, I'm, I don't really feel comfortable. I'm sorry. Janardhan Prabhu, you should come. Janardhan Prabhu, Krishna Prabhu, would you like to present? We have never heard you. Then you have to yes, present. Yes, you have to present. You've never heard you. You have to present. Maharaj, are you saying something? You're on mute. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. I think if, if people haven't presented, they should take a turn to present. Yes. yes. Take a turn to present. We want to hear everyone. You should all take turns to present. Um, uh, Mahagopi Mataji, what does this diminution mean? Say? Diminution is like reduction. There's no loss or uh, disadvantage in oh, on the path. So have you got two groups? Have you made two groups? So we'll have two people speaking from each group because you have two groups in each group. So there will be two people, each, one, each group have a spokesman. Yes? Yes, sir. Uh, Prati Abhayona Vidyati. Mute, mute. And did many times. So if, if anybody okay. wants to... Kirtida Mataji, I'll give you the point. Don't worry about it. No, no, you have to speak. We don't want to hear Kirtida again. She's spoken enough. I have also presented many a time in group. Okay, we'll hear you one more time today. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this, so, Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, no, we just did the first question, Maharaj, because we couldn't discuss two questions separately. We are in the same group, Maharaj, so, like, <laughs> on the same screen. Okay. We can't talk about two different things at the same time. So. Okay. Yes, yeah, so. Okay, let's, let's look at the second one then. Okay. Uh, that is Vyavasaitmika uh, Bhutti. Let's have, we want... Yeah, I know this also, Sloka. Two, two spokesmen. We will have two spokesmen, one for each question, yeah? Yes, uh, we, we thought that we'll discuss both, Maharaj, and then uh, one of us will, you know, like, I mean, from the group, two persons will uh, present it. Okay, good, yeah. Uh, again, I was...
Okay, yeah, no, I think we will end the groups, Prabhu. I think they had enough time because it's coming, coming to nine o'clock. We have to finish. I don't want to be late. Everyone is back now, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. All right. Everyone's back. So we'll ask group number group number three to begin. We have two questions. So we'll have two speakers from each group. Hare Krishna Maharaj. This is Parasati Mandas. Hare Krishna. I'm representing group number three uh -huh. for, the, for part one. Uh, it is the Parvardita Nivadite, it means never diminishing. Uh, it's like it, it has been, uh, we have heard the, this many a time, the spiritual, uh, uh, whatever advancement done in spiritual activities, they are never, they are, they are never diminished, they have a permanent effect. Uh, as compared to the materials uh, activities, uh, we have to. There is there is no um, uh, such logics there. You have to complete it all. There, uh, whereas in spiritual science, one percent is uh, also uh, much valuable. But in material plan, it is like you have to complete it whole. Either it is one or it is a zero. Uh, in, in spiritual, um, uh, we can see in our material studies, we have to complete. Uh, unless until um, uh, we don't get a degree, but uh, in spiritual uh, in spiritual life we've seen in, uh, in many examples as of uh, Ajamil, uh, Putna, uh, they have done very little to Lord and they got a great um, result of this. And even if they don't um, uh, get a result at that time also at that very time. Uh, they are, they give they are given a chance to um, uh, reevaluate re 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 themselves in their next birth. That's it. Hmm. Okay, let's hear from another group. I want to hear this first question again. Pradyabhaya Navijate. Can we hear group number one? Your response to this question. Hare Krishna, uh, we couldn't figure out, I mean, we couldn't really finalize who is going to present. Uh, Jayant Prabhu, would you like to present the first part? So, Prabhu, anyway, you open up, please continue. <laughs> yeah, so we discussed that, like, Vyavasaitma uh, Buddhi. Uh, means it means that uh, no no we want to hear the question yeah. one. Okay. Yes. So we talked about uh, uh, how even a little bit of progress that is made in this this particular part of the life you can keep it going even in your next life. It's like an uh, like a bank account which does not get cancelled upon your death. So if, if you are, you know, if you deposit even little bit of, of uh, your good karmas or, or 
good thing it, it was uh, progress in devotional life in this life and it will you will continue from that point onwards and then uh, Srila Prabhupada is giving the example of Ajamil who actually performed his duty uh, in some percentage of Krishna consciousness like basically he said only one time Narayan's name very very sincerely and that was enough for him to uh, he was given the opportunity to practice Krishna consciousness and go back to God so basically having this resolute uh, kind of, like any any kind of uh, uh, progress that you make within this uh, devotional service is permanent well I don't think that's quite correct that Ajamil chanted the name one time Actually, we, we learn from the Bhagavatam, Ajamila chanted the name Narayan many times, many, many times, because he, it was the name of his son, and he was very attached to that son, it was his youngest son, so he chanted the name many, many times. But Yes, Maharaj, I understand. But we are told, you know, at the time when the Yamaduras came, then he also chanted the name of Narayan. Um, Anyway, the point is taken very nicely that a little, a little advancement can save us from the greatest danger. Even a little bit of devotional service can give us so much benefit. Uh, let's hear the other group. One group remaining didn't speak on this. Pratyavayo Navidyate. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. From this I am representing this Shri Prabhupada. So like as it was before to group, like they are saying, uh, like there is no diminution. Whosoever performs the devotional service is permanent so for the, uh, under the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So like uh, if uh, we are uh, doing any material studies or material work, so that until unless it is fulfilled, nobody will be order. But uh, unlike uh, that in devotional service, we do a little, offer a little flower or water to the God, so God is fully satisfied. Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam, as Lord Krishna said in Gita. So he satisfied within the, with the little leaf on his Tulsi leaf. And also, like uh, if uh, one has boiled uh, a PhD degree, and in the next life he has to start again from the nursery class, take admission. But it is not in the case of a spiritual life. If, but if someone has chanted 16 rounds or only even one round, so in the next life he will start carry forward from that. The, the last previous result we will carry forward in the next life. So they they go with us. And we maintain our account balance of Harinam that we do. The Seva, I mean, rational Seva we do. So we collect our rewards for that for the next life and it carries us. Okay. Yes, thank no you. No 100% maintenance is required. As much as we can do, Lord appreciate is too much. All right. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Hmm? So, pradyavayo navijate, there's no loss or diminution, mm, but, but, but rather we get the greatest benefit. So, it's important for us to remember the nature of devotional service like that. A little advancement could give us so much benefit. All right, let's take the second question, vaya vasayatmika buddhi. Group 3. Hi Krishna Maharaj, uh, I will be presenting on behalf of Group 3. So, Vyavasayatika Buddhir is basically one-pointed attention or resolution towards something. So, a strong faith that uh, by Krishna consciousness one will be elevated to the highest perfection of life is called Vyavasayatmika intelligence. So, it is important that when we practice Krishna consciousness, we we are resolute and uh, are intelligent enough to not uh, be distracted by other uh, uh, duties like familial duties. I mean, we should uh, we should perform our duties, but our focus, our attention should be focused on uh, Krishna consciousness and self-realization. So. Uh, 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 one of the examples that was given by Parsar Tuman Prabhu was how when uh, Dronacharya had, was, was instructing his students, he had asked them to aim, they, they, he wanted them to shoot the eye of the bird. And the only person who could do it was Arjuna because he, he had his one-pointed attention at the eye of the bird and not 
the tree or the bird's body. And it was only because he concentrated on the eye of the bird that he was able to uh, shoot with precision. Oh, yes. That's a nice example. Very good, yeah. Drona asked the different students, what do you see? And some would say, oh, I see the tree. And some would say, oh, I see the branch with the bird on it. And when it came to Arjuna, he asked Arjuna, what do you see? And Arjuna said, I just see the eye of the bird. So he could pierce the eye of the bird. So like that, vaya vasayatmika buddhi, we want to be very focused, one-pointed attention. Yes, let's uh, hear from the other groups. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, from group two Maharaj, uh, for this part of the shloka. Um, so, um, as Mataji had, uh, um, I mean, explained the part of the shloka, it is like complete focus um, in focusing in uh, Krishna consciousness and focusing our intelligence in, in Krishna consciousness. And um, actually, um, when we have strong faith, we can achieve this uh, highest perfection. Uh, um, of uh, Vyavasatmika intelligence. And also here, uh, uh, when we are uh, completely engaged in the duties of Krishna consciousness, uh, we need not actually uh, act separately for our family traditions or humanity or nationality. Uh, we need not act everything. Like, so for example, like how Prabhupada says, when we are watering the root of a tree, um, automatically all the other parts of the tree are nourished. Uh, and they get their energy uh, by just uh, watering the root of the tree. So uh, similarly, when we are actually focusing and uh, uh, complete having one pointed focus and complete faith in the Lord, and when we are actually engaged in our devotional service, all the other uh, um, material activities are also uh, satisfied. Um, so um, that was one point. And the other point was like, uh, we need not actually um, um, be worried about what is good or bad. Uh, we are not actually subject to uh, dualities. Actually, as we are progressing in our Krishna consciousness, we automatically come out of the conception uh, of uh, material conception. We come out of the material uh, plane and uh, we start looking at everything in the spiritual um, concept. So um, automatically, uh, uh, we actually elevate ourselves in our spiritual consciousness and uh, we actually uh, renounce uh, ourselves from the material conception. So that process also happens when we are having complete focus and uh, faith in the uh, um, uh, devotional service. So um, when we uh, focus and concentrate at one point, then the other activities also are uh, getting satisfied. Yes, all right. Thank you, Mariji. Very nice. Yeah, very complete description here of Vaya Vasayatmika Bhuti, that we have to have full faith in order to have that kind of focused uh, uh, intelligence, in order to be fully fixed on the goal. One has to have very firm faith and know that simply by serving Krishna, one can achieve everything. All right, thank you. One group remaining. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanat Pranams. I'll be presenting from group one, part yeah. two. Yes. Why I was, uh, why I was with, uh, why I was with, uh, buddhi means uh, resolute in Krishna consciousness and uh, buddhi means intelligence. So completely determined as Mataji, as both Mataji explained, is the aim is one and the focus is one and uh, is uh, completely determined onto the part of Krishna consciousness to attain, uh, you know, the highest perfection. The best example we can give on this point is, uh, the example of Srila Prabhupada, how determined he was to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And uh, following uh, what uh, his Guru Maharaj said, uh, his Guru Maharaj instructed to, uh, you know, give Krishna consciousness, give Krishna to everyone. The way uh, Srila Prabhupada, you know, uh, went on to Jaladuta in the, in almost when he was in 70s, surviving three heart attacks, completely depending on the Supreme Personality of God. Printing uh, literature, Krishna consciousness literature, and giving Krishna to everyone. I guess uh, that is the best example that we can give in terms of determination and having complete faith onto the Lord. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Prabhus. So, just to go ahead here, but just to wind up, here are the 
points which we've been covering today. A brief overview of Krishna's instruction on Jnana, distinguishing the, the nature of the soul from the body. We didn't really go into it very deeply. I just looked at a couple of verses. For the soul there's no birth and there's no death. Of course those things are there for the body. But it's nice for you to read through these different verses and be familiar with the different points which are made. Then Arjuna's, uh, Krishna's response to Arjuna's three reasons for not fighting. Compassion was defeated by knowledge and then enjoyment was defeated by karmakanda and sinful reactions was defeated by buddhi yoga. So then the summary of the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, and how Bhagavad Gita summarizes the contents of the Gita. Chapter 2 began with Arjuna's surrender to Krishna. And then Krishna instructs Arjuna, first of all in the philosophy, Gyan or Sankhya, and then it goes into Karmakanda, and from Karmakanda then comes to Buddhi Yoga, and at the end of the chapter, which we haven't covered yet, we will hear about the Stita Deer Muni, or the self-realized soul. And because Bhagavad Gita includes Jnana Yoga and Karma Yoga and a little bit of Bhakti Yoga. And so Bhakti Vinod Thakur said this second chapter summarizes the Gita, the main teachings of the Gita, of course. Karma, Jnana and Bhakti. Then on evaluation, we looked at the relevance of Karma Kanda in relationship to the practice of Krishna Consciousness. And actually it's not relevant, path of karmakanda activities are not relevant in Krishna consciousness. We want, to have the, we want to have children and so on, marriages and so on. These things are done in Krishna consciousness, they're not done as karmakanda. So the path of devotional service is quite distinct from the path of material pleasure, sense gratification. And the practice of Krishna Consciousness, hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna and worshipping Krishna, these are all authorized in the Vedas, certainly accepted in the Vedas. Regarding academic integrity, we spoke about the verse karmani eva di karaste and how people often simply take the first section and say, I'm working for Krishna. I'm doing, but then they don't apply the second part, and they don't consider the other sections of the verse. So the appropriate application is to work for Krishna and also to give the results to Krishna. And then here we've just finished looking at the significance of these terms, pratyavayona vidyate and vaya vasayatmika buddhi. Vaya Vasayatmika Buddhi, of course, was very special verse for devotees because it inspired Srila Prabhupada to go to America, to leave India and to go to the West because he, he saw in the purport, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's purport on this verse, Vaya Vasayatmika Buddhi, that one has to take the order of the spiritual master as his life and soul. So when Srila Prabhupada read this, then he thought that it's very important for him to go to the West because he understood this was something very dear to the heart of his spiritual master. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati not only gave this instruction to our Srila Prabhupada, he gave this instruction to many people, but it was our Srila Prabhupada who took it up and who was successful. And he was inspired by this verse, Vaya Vas Ayat Mika Buddhi, that one should be determined, fully focused on the order of the spiritual master. Concluding quote Bogaisvarya Prasaktanam Taya Parita Chaitasam. 
so Boga and Aishwarya, in the minds of those who are attached to material opulence and sense gratification, resolute determination for devotional service does not take place. If we are attached to material enjoyment and sense gratification and bewildered by such things, then we won't be able to do devotional service. So Krishna told Arjuna like that, that you have to become detached. And Prabhupada speaks here, this material advancement of civilization, very nice, very dazzling, just like when we pass on the street or road of your American cities, it looks so nice, so many lights and so many night illuminating signboards. But we should always remember that this nice situation is not permanent settlement. Any moment I'll have to give up everything. Vaya vasai atmika buddhi samado na vidyate. So, therefore, if one becomes attached to this false platform, illuminating, so called illuminating, false platform, then his determination to go back to Godhead will not be very much intense. Right? will not be vāyavāsāyātmikābhūti. Bahushakāhi anantasya. The minds of those who are irresolute, in other words, not very intense, for the, in the minds of those who are ir, irresolute, their determination is many-branched. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, mm, we get, oh, do this, oh no, Allah, let's give it up, let's do that. And we, easily we give up. We have no determination to maintain and to continue and to go on. And we want to give up and we want to stop. That weak determination, that is the bahusaka yananta. We, we, be, we become bewildered. So we shouldn't be like that. We should be vayavasayatmika buddhi. We should be focused, fixed, determined. That's important. Okay, Srila Prabhupada ki chai. Any questions? Anyone? Maharaj, you were supposed to give us uh, OVA questions today. Oh yeah, let me get my book.
All right. Uh, have you got wh which pages are your questions on? Thirty-six. Which page? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Yes, my hand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think question number three. Discuss how the general principles drawn from Arjuna's dilemma are relevant to your own practice of Krishna consciousness with reference to Bhagavad Gita 2, 6 to 10. All right? Well, work on this one first. What? What are you saying, Prabhu? Have to be written for this unit. I can't understand what you're saying. What? What has to be returned for this unit? There has to be two OPAs. The students need to Yeah, so I'm giving you one just now and I'll give you another one. After oh. I, the other one you won't be able to do yet because we haven't covered it yet. But it will come from the later section. Probably number seven. Right? Number three and number seven. All right? Any other questions? No, you have to do both. 